Adventures in Adhesives for Making Knives. William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And here, we're illustrating the use of several quite different adhesives in the knife-making process. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today we're in the knife shop and going to talk about what might be called adventures in adhesives at least so far as the knife making arts go. I am in the process of building a Billy Joe Rubido rib chopper, shown here. Uh, this rib chopper is a rather unusual tool. It's made from a piece of lawnmower blade. It's intentionally very rustic indeed. Uh, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear kind of thing. And it is going to have a handle of stainless steel that fits over this wooden shaft. Now this shaft started out as a block of wood and so I have reduced it to approximate diameter on my belt sander back there. So consequently, although rounded, it is not perfectly round so far as to fit exactly a one inch hole. Well, if I had a lathe, of course I would have been able to turn such a shaft, but I don't got one. So consequently we used what we had to do what we needed. So I'm going to glue the pipe onto this shaft using Gorilla Glue, which expands to fill the voids quite aggressively, by the way, if you haven't used it. Now, there was another issue with this knife in that this section right here, the steel tang did not come all the way back to the wood. So there's a triangular gap here. Rather than fill all of that with adhesive, I have cut a wedge to fit. So that is going to be glued in here with a very rapid setting glue. Then the pommel will need to be attached, which is this block of drilled wood here, and the hole is to fit this screw eye, and that will be set in with the familiar shoe goo. We need to do some preparation first. I'm going to clean the inside of this stainless steel tube with alcohol to make sure I have a clean bonded surface. And I'm also going to wrap the back of this blade with masking tape. So when the shoe goo expands, I'll be able to clean the blade uh, much easier. So we're going to be about doing that. First off, we're going to set it in the vise and then apply our Instacure here, also known as super glue in the trade. This Instacure or super glue sets very, very rapidly indeed. It's quite fluid. Okay, now that is there, and it's firm. I 
I did not get it exactly down to the end where I want it, but it's too late now. Once this stuff is in there, it's there. So now I'll take this off and put it on the sander and sand this down to where it's flush with the top of this. Now that the super glue has it supported on both sides. Now that we have our filler here ground down, we'll have a trial fit and see if our handle does right. Yes, okay. So that, that works. So we're ready for the next application of glues. Which we want to rub all around the material. And make sure we fill in any gaps. I'm putting a generous amount of this around because I'm going to actually rotate this as I set it. So this will smear this all around as we drive it forward. Need a little bit on the back though. Yeah. yeah. This is smearing it all on the inside and having it fill up all the little voids. It's actually acting right now as sort of a lubricant. Okay, it's all the way down. So this needs now to set for about three hours. You're now witnessing Gorilla Glue's ooze and exude phase. Uh, here, as it sets, it polymerizes. And this adhesive is expanding to fill all the little gaps underneath this water pipe. Now when it sets, finally, it will set glass hard, but right now I can indent it with my fingers, and this is the easy time to remove the excess. Our next application of adhesives is going to be of our shoe goo. I previously drilled a hole and countersunk it in this stainless steel tubing here. And I've now just run the bit down and freshened it out. And we're going to put a nail in here. And that steel nail will drive down through this stainless steel and through completely our wooden shaft and mechanically affix this to its wooden core. Uh, so we have it glued and mechanically fixed, which is the way I like to build knives. Um, I use both techniques. After freshening the hole, we found that, well, actually that's a little too loose. So we found another larger diameter nail. This is a common roofing nail. And we're going to use shoe goo here. Shoe goo is elastic. So it better stands shock pressures. And... So we're going to give it a more than generous coating. Start it down in the hole. And set it like yay. So now, we have our stainless steel tubing very firmly glued and affixed to its wooden shaft. 
The next piece of work is to take this off flush so we can glue and attach the end cap with the aid of this screw eye. The end of our piece here is sticking just a little proud over the steel. So we're going to put this on the belt sander and grind this down to one plane so that our pommel will fit. Now if you're wondering how this hole was drilled, uh, the hole was drilled before these two pieces were separated. So this way uh, it's a little by guessing by God, but at least we got it somewhere very near the center. And uh, the hole extends all the way back to about here. So we have plenty of room for the screw eye to screw in and set. We're going to do our final bit of work here on the pommel with the shoe goo. Previously, what we have done is to attach this wood piece to this metal shaft. We squared this off and we screwed this through this piece of wood into the piece of wood inside the shaft. And while it was retained, we went ahead and shaped the sides of this pommel. Now we're going to shape the back and we need to remove this screw and we're going to reset it with the shoe goo. So I've got it both wood and steel held in the vise and we're going to see if we can extract this screw eye and keep everything else intact. Nearly out now. Okay, now that will enable to put us a little sanding finish here and finish off this back. We have completed our adventures with knife making adhesives. We have used uh, two varieties of super glue, Gorilla Glue, Shoe Goo, to stick this together. We also use some mechanical elements. These, this is a brass rod, it's 3 16ths inch. We use that here to mechanically restrain the blade. We also have a nail on the other side that goes through here to hold this tubing to the wood core. The wood itself is tea olive from the same tree that Billy Joe clung on to for dear life during a hurricane in Louisiana. And uh, we salvaged some of it. Some of this is spalted and quite colorful as you see. This design has led to our production version, which is here. This is a blank. Uh, this happens to be out of stainless steel and uh, we're going to handle it with aluminum pipe here in much the same manner as we did this one. So uh, this will be offered through Hobie's Knives of China as a production knife. But now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye. God bless, and see you next time. The Billy Joe Rubido rib chopper is shown on the bottom, and on the top is a blank that we'll use for making our commercial versions of this knife. This is our logo with some of our knives of ancient Chinese derivation, more of them shown on a red background, even more shown on one-inch pegboard. I am the author of Backyard Deer Hunting as well as other outdoor books and all of them have chapters on knives and how we use them on cleaning and cooking big game. And these books include Extreme Muzzleloading, 
crossbow hunting, and practical bow fishing. This rib chopper is designed to be used by one man who opens a carcass, holds it with one hand, and then chops down the ribs on both sides with the other. For more information on Hovey's Knives of China, you can go to the blog below. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 600 videos, you can go to www.hoveysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.